with Xavier Booker off the table, where do the Hoosiers go from here with the 2022 recruiting class? You are Locked On Hoosiers, your daily podcast on the Indiana Hoosiers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, guys? It is Wednesday, August 3rd. This is Locked on Hoosiers, your one and only daily one-stop shop for everything IU Athletics. I'm your host, as always, Jacob Rude. I want to thank you guys for making Locked on Hoosiers your first listen every single day. We have a special Recruiting Wednesday show. Uh, Hopefully, we'll become a staple each week moving forward on IU Basketball with Jason Jordan, the Director of Basketball Recruiting, at Sports Illustrated. Uh, We talked on a number of things, Xavier Booker, Aronson Page, Jamie Kaiser, Deshaun Harris-Smith, and then I used two commits, Gabe Cups and Ja'Kai Newton. Tried to touch on a lot of stuff here, and I don't want to keep you guys waiting, so let's throw it to that conversation. And as promised, we are now joined by Sports uh, Illustrated's uh, Director of Basketball Recruiting, Jason Jordan, it's probably been a uh, whirlwind couple of months for you, man, but uh, how are you doing? Doing well, man. Doing well. How about you? I- I'm doing great. Uh, it's a great time to be an IU basketball fan. They've been they've been busy in the recruiting uh, on the recruiting trail. We're going to talk all about that here in a second. First, uh, I'd like to thank LinkedIn Jobs for being the official college basketball recruiting sponsor across the Locked On College Network. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. Uh, I know it's a little bit of old news, uh, and he didn't go to IU, but felt like we kind of at least had to have uh, one kind of quick question. Just Xavier Booker commits to Michigan State. He he trimmed down his list to 10 and then kind of quickly committed to Michigan State. Was there really any surprise there that, that he ended up with uh, the Spartans and Tom Izzo? No, no. I mean, I think they were locked in uh, for a while. And he relationship with Tom Izzo was just – had he almost had like an Im- unbreakable bond. So it was kind of a foregone conclusion that he was headed there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, obviously, <laughs> definitely I'm sure you guys wanted to get him. A lot of guys did. Um, going to be – program game changer a program changer for sure um so but yeah he was embedded there deeply uh relationship with time as it was very very close yeah and you could tell just from the quotes he was giving relationships mattered quite a lot to him in the recruiting process the guys that indiana are targeting now in the 2023 class are going to be the focus uh kind of start off with if they lose out on Xavier Booker, if they're looking for a big man, looks like uh, Aaronson Page is the guy that they're prioritizing. Yeah. A little bit different game uh, than than Xavier Booker, but what type of prospect is he? Well, he's a great facilitator from the high post. Uh, definitely a guy you can um, run your offense through, and I think that's one. Of, that's probably his greatest strength is that um, he's a a playmaker in that you know in that middle post area. Um, so he's got great feel. Great vision as a passer. Um, he hits guys on the back screen when the defense converges. And he's a guy who, you know, you can pass it in and he can maneuver in the face up and finish with both hands. So, um, you know, I think he's, a you know, he's definitely a, a formidable, um, <laughs> if you want to call him a a, uh, a B option, um, I would definitely say that's an upgrade of a B option. But, um guy i'm definitely high on and um, obviously mix it up mixes it up down there and rebounds tough gritty um, and plays on both ends of the floor so he's gonna check off a lot of boxes for sure yeah it's hard to to call a probably a top 50 guy a b option maybe 1a and 1b but uh he's someone that uh, even before booker made his announcement iu had kind of seems like they'd started to prioritize him a bit maybe they got a sense uh that they weren't going to be in on Booker at the end. So uh, certainly someone that it seems like IU has made inroads in and and, uh, someone that um, they really impressed at the visit based on everything that we read from last week. Uh, Jamie Kaiser, the next one that was in on a visit last week, someone that uh, only recently 
committed to basketball over football, a, a shooter. Yeah. Uh, what's this summer been like for him? Uh, productive for sure. Like you said, it. I mean, you said his greatest attribute, definitely stretching the defense with that jump shot. Um, NBA range extended. Um, but he picks his spots where I think the, his ability to stroke it definitely overshadows his ability as a playmaker. I think, you know, there's something, it's not his best thing, but I mean, um, he's a really, really good shooter. So, but he's a, he's a really good playmaker as well. And I think that sometimes gets overshadowed. Great prospect, six, six, I mean, you know, great size. So he's going to check off uh, boxes on the defensive end with his ability to guard multiple positions. So, um, definitely an intriguing prospect for sure. IU doesn't have a lot of either shooting or size on the wing right now. So it, it, it makes sense yeah. that they're going after a six, six shooter, uh, as yeah. I'm sure a, a lot of schools would love to have a, a six, six yeah. shooter, uh, yeah. coming in. Um, last guy that IU had in, uh, Deshaun Harris Smith, um, mm -hmm just outside the top 100 in, in at least on right. 247 sports on, on a couple places but still a, a really productive really interesting recruit based on on what i've read up on it he seems like a little bit of a, a unique recruit yeah well he, he kind of fits the mold he, he, he spaces the floor as well like he's he's got a good stroke great size i think he's around six five um but just a physical guy more physical than kaiser i would say um athletic physical um keeps the defense off balance with his ability to knock down shots so um he's had a productive summer as well yeah and he's someone that um iu also had in and also seems like the visit went well there aren't many times that you hear right. the visit went poorly yeah. to be fair so yeah. uh there, there's only so much you can take from from oh this visit went really well so uh it, it's all optimistic right now but uh, certainly, guys, we're going to be talking about here in the coming weeks, months, depending on how long these recruitments go on. But wanted to talk about the guys IU has in the class and, and yeah. that the guys they already have committed because I know I've been guilty of it. We've been focusing so much on who could be coming in that maybe I haven't talked enough about who they have uh, in the class. So we're going to dive in on Gabe Cups and Ja'Kai Newton here in just a moment. Before we talk about Gabe Cups, I want to let you guys know about betonline.net because it is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. Find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Find reviews and news of every league, including MLB, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, eSports, and even golf. BetOnline continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information from live in-game betting scores and podcasts they have you covered head to bet online today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today bet online where the game starts i want to thank you guys for making locked on hoosiers your first listen every single day be sure to go subscribe over at youtube put the episodes up there daily now let's throw back to our conversation with jason I want to start off with uh, we'll start off with Gabe Cups, who um, both these guys I believe are, are top 100 guys by mm -hmm. most uh, by most rankings. But I, I would imagine at least the general fan might know Gabe Cups more for playing with Bronny James. But uh, you don't become a top 100 guy just by being Bronny's teammate. So uh, what's just kind of the the general profile on uh, Gabe Cups? Uh, just a smart. Smart floor general, right? Like um, he, I saw him down. Uh, most recently, I saw him down at uh, the Adidas All American Camp in uh, South Carolina, I believe it was. And um, you know, with the best guards on the Adidas circuit, I mean, he was right up there, if not the best guard there. He was certainly one of the top three. Um, just his feel is just uh, off the charts. Always makes the right reads, always dictates the pace. Um, he's one of those guards that you will never speed up if he doesn't want to speed up. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. like I've, and I see guys like press him, press up on him a lot, like, you know, make him kind of try and rattle him. And he just, he's just like, you know, cool as a fan, you know, always at his own pace and always with his head up on a swivel. And he makes the right reads. And then he's a three level scorer, like, he's a knockdown shooter. Um, 
but he's always looking to get his teammates involved and he gets them the ball in the optimal uh, places where they're most effective, right? So he's going to throw the lead pass to the area as opposed to to the hand. So those are little things that I look at, little nuances that make him uh, really elite in my book. I'm really high on Gabe. I watched him a lot over the last couple of years with him and Reed teaming up uh, for Midwest. So um, a, a prospect who's definitely going to be a fan favorite there. And I think a guy who's, who's going to have a lot of success, you know, in that system. He's been all over following IU. He's been to Bloomington a couple times. He was at the the first four game, which which wasn't a drive for him. So, yeah. uh, but he's someone I've kind of seen the comparison. It's an easy one to make. He's a six two, one hundred sixty five pound white guard that I've seen the Aaron Kraft, the Brad Davison comparisons. Is he anything like either one of those guys? I can see the Aaron Kraft thing. I can see that. Um... I think I, I think his vision is maybe a little, you know, maybe even a little bit better. Um, and I, you know, I'm I, at this at the same point. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't yeah. want to make him, you know, the the anointed one. But um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah. but I think at this point, at, at both of this point for them, I think his vision is probably better than both of them. Um, and he plays with a confidence that I love. Is very much infectious, and he, uh, you know, he knows that he can get to where he wants to on the court. And he knows that he can run the team and, and, you know, that matriculates throughout the team. I've seen that happen firsthand. And kind of that confidence, that swagger maybe comes from the fact that he wins a whole lot. Uh, yeah, especially, yeah, especially at, at Centerville and um, AAU circuit. It, how much has, has he kind of impacted that, that winning culture, especially at high school? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, when you're when you're winning in the summer, especially in the circuit that he's on, um, which I would say is the most the second most competitive circuit behind the Nike UIBL, um, it's definitely going to um, help you upstairs because you're playing against yeah. other five star kids, other four star kids, and then when you're coming out and you're leaving the game, most of the time, and I do mean most of the time, as the best guard on the court. Um, it tends to carry over into high school where you're not playing against the four and a five star guys. So um, that is something that uh, that coaches, you know, that that is a premium that coaches put on prospects, you know, winners. And um, he's definitely um, definitely a guy who fits that mold. I know this is a little bit of projection and, and maybe not something we're able to really know. But is this a guy that can can come in and make an impact right away, stepping on campus in the Big Ten? Well, I certainly expect him to. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I, 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 and I know that they, they feel that he can as well. Um, like, he's really he's really that guy. You know, he, you yeah. know, he kind of reminds me of uh, Tyler Lewis years ago. Uh, they were, he was a McDonald's All-American. He played on the Oak Hill team that went 44-0. and mm-hmm. um, He was the best player on that team. I mean, the best player on that team ended up playing at uh, NC State. And I think he ended up uh, transferring to Xavier Butler, Butler actually. Look at Butler. Okay, don't kill me, Tyler. Yep. Um, and so, um, <laughs> so yeah, I, I could I could definitely see Gabe fit in that mold. Um, and Tyler played with a, a a chip that I feel like Gabe came in a great way. Uh, you know, a competitive chip. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, exciting. I know a lot of IU fans were excited about this when he committed he wasn't i don't think he was on many boards it seems like someone who's who's really risen up i mean do you expect that kind of rise in the rankings to continue yeah he had a great summer i I expect him to go up um he's definitely a guy we're going to put our si 99 later in the year he's definitely a guy that'll be in um in talks for the top tier so um i was super impressed with him always have been he never you know a lot of times when i go see uh elite guys who are supposed to be the guy um, it's always funny. I always joke with coaches when I'm there. I'm like, this guy, he's doing the, he's doing the, I'm too cool to score thing. Like, Dude, <laughs> that, yeah. We came to see you, man, but you show me something, you know? Yeah. And I, I say that a lot, <laughs> you know, I end up, I, I find myself saying that a lot. And so I always I think you're putting me to sleep over here, right? That is not Gabe. Gabe is going <laughs> to check that game, you know, like he going, he's going to get it. And I, I certainly respect that about him for sure. He ain't putting anybody to sleep, and that's great news for uh, for IU fans. He's not the only one in the class that has uh, committed. 
Uh, Hoosiers also have Ja'Kai Newton coming in. We'll talk a little, uh, more about him here in just a moment. I would say Ja'Kai is certainly the, um, maybe for IU fans, the less heralded of the two. But again, depending on where you look, he, he's the higher ranked of the two. Uh, yeah. Someone IU fans, I don't know how much they know about him. It, with with Gabe Cups, it, he's kind of out there a little bit more. I mean, maybe because of being the teammate of Bronny. I, I think they they had their low, their reunion uh, this summer at one point as well. Uh, yeah. When it comes to Jakai, uh, again, just what kind of what's what type of prospect is he? Yeah, I think you know he may be a little bit more um, because he's a lot more explosive, right? Um, so people love the wow plays, and you know he's going to give you an explosive play uh, a couple times a game. Um, so, but a guy who's a three level scorer as well, an interchangeable guy, guard, you know, who can play uh, multiple positions and, you know, he's comfortable with the ball in his hands and, and comfortable as a facilitator too. But, um, yeah, he's, he's shooting three point line, NBA three point line extended. Um, but a guy who can score in bunches and, um, he really competes on the defensive end. So at six, three, he's really long and really athletic and he's, he's strong and physical. So, you know, he's going to, um, chest to chest up with um, a bigger guard and you know, he probably can guard one through the three. So wow. a guy you can run with a lot of different lineups and a guy who will check off a lot of boxes on that defensive end as well. Great anticipation as a defender, Ja'Kai. Yeah. And Mike Woodson has made defense a, a big yeah. thing in Bloomington yeah. since coming back. So, yeah. So it, it makes sense that somebody that's a strong defender is someone that mm -hmm. um, the staff w would key in on. Is that three-point shooting, just kind of looking at his strength, is that, you think, his biggest strength? Yeah, yeah. He's um, he's definitely knocking it down efficiently out there, and um, he's done that consistently. So I would say, uh, you know, that and his athleticism, I think, you know, he's an athletic guy who gets to his spots really well, and he, he can, he's strong enough to finish through contact. So those things, I would say, would, would stand out to me offensively for him. And, I mean, we mentioned – uh, I use still recruiting kind of guards with with Kaiser with um, Harris Smith. They already have cups in. Do you think that's because the I mean, because of the versatility? I guess you were talking yeah. about with someone like Newton that he can play a yeah. couple different positions. Do you think that that could be why? Yeah. Well, I think you know the focal point for. Um, I mean, I talked to too many coaches at Peach Jam. Yeah. I'm tired of my coach, and so you know <laughs> a lot of their focal points. Uh, what they're looking for now, you know, what, if you look at the past uh, few champions over the past few years, you know, the the uh, the blueprint, so to speak, is is um, versatile guards who you can use interchangeably. So whoever gets the rebound, let's go start the break. You're the playmaker on this play or, or you can have a point four where you're the playmaker on this play. A lot of guys are going four out um, with one big down there and um just flooding the hardwood with uh, playmakers and and that, you know, lends itself to uh, everybody sharing the ball. And, you know, it, it's like a win-win. One of the coaches was telling me, like, you know, when everybody's happy, everybody's happy when playmakers all over the floor because everybody wants to make the right play. And so when that that uh, that in, encourages sharing of the ball and, you know, it's a win all around. So that, that makes, uh, you know, Jakai and Gabe, you know, that makes sense that they fit the mold for uh, playmakers, you know, extraordinary in Gabe's, Gabe's, uh, in Gabe's case, for sure. And there have been multiple comments from, from recruits, from current players, that kind of Woodson's ideal team is one that he doesn't really pigeonhole anyone into you're a five, you're a, a four, you're a three and whatnot, that – uh, he kind of wants that idea of there being playmakers all around the court right. and right. and whatnot. So I mean that fits to the to what you were saying and kind of the mo of the some of the guys uh, he's recruiting. Uh, kind of a similar question with Newton as we had with Cups. Is he a guy that uh, you can see maybe with that shooting ability able to come in and, and make an impact right away? Yeah, absolutely. I think they're both um, they're both expected to come in and and you know impact the impact uh, winning. From day one, I know the staff is definitely um, has that in mind, and and I think they're both capable um, ability wise to to do that from from the beginning. It's 
it's a a good start to a class. It's a good class already. It's one that it yes. seems like they're they're going to be adding to. Uh, hopefully, knock on wood, if some things go right uh, here in the coming weeks, we'll have uh, plenty to talk about with yes. uh, with Jason here. And we left some meat on the bone with a lot of stuff. I also want to down the road talk to you about Malik and Jalen Hood Shafino, yes. two guys who are gonna play big roles with uh with indiana here but we got some time uh, looking forward to this every week uh, let the people know where they can find your work at uh si.com college basketball section always there all the time uh you twitter you have my twitter handle there and jason c jordan at instagram yeah come check me out for sure awesome looking forward to uh to making this a weekly thing and uh looking forward to talk to you next week all right my man thanks for having me Thanks again to Jason for hopping on today. And as I said, hopefully this is going to become a weekly thing. He's with the Locked On Network now uh, to talk recruiting. So as often as we can have him on weekly, we're going to do that. Uh, We'll be back tomorrow to talk IU football. Any initial takeaways we have from uh, the first week of fall camp. So thanks again for making Locked On Hoosiers. Your first listen every day. Know what your team is up against across the Big Ten with Locked On Big Ten. Every day, host Nate Dickinson and the local experts of Locked On take you across to the Big Ten in 30 minutes. Make Locked On Big Ten your second listen, Locked On Big Ten. Follow me or follow us, I should say, over on Twitter at LO underscore Hoosiers. Subscribe to the podcast. Leave a quick rating and review. Most importantly, though, guys, have a terrific, terrific Wednesday in LEO.